Alright, hello dear master students. My name is Yasser Abdel Kadim Yasser and I will be with you throughout the research method lectures for this course. The topics of this course including introduction, ethics and health research, stages of the scientific research process including identifying a research topic, review of literature, defining and refining the research question, generating the research hypothesis, types of research methodologies, populations and samples, data collection, data analysis, interpreting the results, and then you will take writing a research protocol, and finally writing and publishing a scientific paper. Lecture 1 includes Introduction and Ethics in Health Research. We can define research as a systematic collection of data with description, analysis, and interpretation in order to answer a question or solve a problem. This is a sequence of each research. In health research, the data can be used to improve the health of individuals or groups. With the research process, we can change the information to knowledge. This with critical assessment and by comparing it with the existing knowledge. In our daily life, we are doing a research process every day. For example, when we want to buy a car, first of all, we will do a systematic collection of data about the type, model of the car and the agencies. Then we will describe, analyze, and interpret these data in order to solve our problem and reach a scientific conclusion of which type of car that we want to buy. So this is the same sequence of our research process in order to answer our question or solve a problem. Is complex or not complex process important for a good research? Indeed, it's not necessary to do a complex instrumentation for a good research. Every time, try to make your research as simple as possible in order to avoid errors. So complex methodologies is not requirement for a good research. What is more important or the keys for good research are proper planning, accuracy in data collection, and proper unbiased interpretation. Always remember that there is only one type of research which is good research. Otherwise, badly done research is just a waste of time, money and effort and at the same time it's unethical because you will expose the individuals to a risk of experimentation without any benefit. Also, it's important to know that research is not a method of proof. In other words, that research does not prove anything, but it provides a supportive evidence for or against the existing or nature of relationships among or between the variables of interest. Because information or knowledge is a cumulative process, so we need multiple researches in order to reach a method of proof. Now, ethics in health research.
Whenever you have a study including participants, individual participants or animal, you need to apply ethics in your health research. You as a researcher, you need the help of individuals in order to do your research. And many of the participants are willing to expose many of their personal information. Your duty is to treat this information with honesty and respect. The general ethical principles for human studies First of all, beneficence or benefit. Every effort should be done to maximize the benefits to the subjects who will participate in the study. For example, when you are testing a new therapy or procedure, there should be an evidence that's already available to prove that this therapy or procedure is superior to the currently available alternatives. Second, non-maleficence or no harm. Always avoid exposing the participant to harm. An adequate data must be available from animal studies or from studies of small number of human subjects to confirm safety and to suggest effectiveness of your therapy. Third, respect. When you have individual participation in your study, this should be completely voluntary and based on informed consent. In other words, that you should not force the individuals to participate in the study without any prior information about the study. When you have collection of data on individuals, Privacy should be protected by ensuring confidentiality. Always respect society's cultural, moral, religious, and legal values. Fourth, justice. No population group should carry an undue burden of research for the benefit of another group. So your research groups should be treated equally. For animal studies, the general ethical principles first, the research should be justified. So you cannot do any research or animals without any justification. Mercy is an ethical imperative. The animal experiments must be relevant to the advancement of knowledge or are an essential step before human experimentation. In vitro biological systems or computer simulations model should be considered wherever possible as substitutes to animal research. So if you can do in vitro study, you should do it before an animal study. You should not start with animal study whenever you can do it in another way. So in summary, the general ethical principles include benefit, no harm, respect, justice, and always consider mercy and honesty. Responsibilities for ethics in health research lying on first investigators. You as a researcher or investigator, you have the primary and ultimate responsibility for applying the ethics in your research. This should be as a part of your training and you should be aware of the ethical imperatives in the research. So the primary responsibility lying on the investigator. 
second research institution. In your case, this is the college or the university, which include an ethics committee that should revise your protocol and give you a letter permitting you to do your research following the ethical principles. The committee should be completely independent from the investigators and with no direct interest in the proposal. Funding agencies and organizations should not fund any research unless there is an ethical letter from the ethics committee of the institution just to confirm the ethical aspects of the study. National Drug Regularity Agency, for example, when you have a new drug or devices that are not yet approved in the country, this should not be used on human subjects without approval being obtained from their use under the conditions of the study. And finally, editors of medical journals. Reports of research not complying with the ethical standards should not be accepted for publication. To summarize responsibility for ethics in health research, the primary responsibility is on investigators, then research institution, funding agencies and organizations, national drug regularity agency, and finally editors of medical journals. Ethical considerations throughout the research process include first, getting approval of ethics from the ethical review committee. For studies in the biomedical field involving human subjects or animal, the protocol must be approved by the Institutional Ethics Review Committee. Informed decision-making, a consent form, whatever appropriate, must be developed and attached to the protocol. The consent form has two parts. First, a participant or patient information sheet describing the study. Second, a certificate indicating the subject's consent to participate in the study. The patient information sheet should first explain why the study is being done and why the subject has been asked to participate. Describe in sequence what will happen in the course of the study, giving enough detail for the subjects to gain a clear idea of what to expect. Clarify whether or not the study is associated with benefits or adverse effects to the subjects or to others. Indicate that the subject has the right to withdraw from the study at any time without in any way affecting his or her further health care. So these factors should be considered when you are doing or writing a patient information sheet. So now we finished introduction and ethics in health research. In lecture two, we will take stages of the scientific research process, identifying a research topic, review of literature, defining and refining the research question, and generating the research hypothesis. Thank you for your attention.